demonstration of this particular example. What we are going to see next is the only airworthy original First World War bomber surviving in the world. And the only airworthy example of its power plant surviving in the world as well. And quite apart from all that, another aircraft type that served in the early days of RAF Duxford. service with the Royal Flying Corps in spite of that. And large numbers of them were supplied to squadrons in France. Of 98, 206 and 211 squadrons were deployed by early April 1918 when the RAF was formed as an independent service. The Calais region of France. All three DH9 squadrons were very heavily engaged indeed in combating the German offensive during the Battle of the Leeds or the Fourth Battle of Ypres throughout April 1918 in the tactical bombing role. And that day, aircraft like this came into operation with the independent force as strategic bombers. Once again, though, the shortcomings were all too clear. Skies again from here on the 13th of May 
this year. And it's very appropriate because DH9s were stationed here with numbers 119, 123 and 129 squadrons, which were located at Duxford from March to July and August 1918 as the first RAF aircraft stationed here. They were also on the strength of number 35 training depot station and improved much modified DH-9A models which served so extensively around the British Empire after World War I were stationed here with number two flying training school. Flying in front of us, a very revealing set of the engine of the DH-9 had one big drawback from the start. It was committee designed, although each of the three men responsible for it was an eminent designer in his own right. They didn't get on and barely spoke to each other. So there were various dangerous faults we had to put right. They had so many breakages of valve springs, cams and crankshafts. Conrad failures were common and they broke at exactly the point where the aeronautical inspection directorate stamp was embossed. He went on to say that the aircraft took ages to ascend the 3,000 feet and climbed when loaded with bombs. restoration and handled in typically magnificent fashion by Dodge Bailey, Roger Bailey, former chief pilot of the Shuttleworth Collection who also carried out this aircraft's maiden post-restoration flight back in May and is so well versed in flying machines of the First World War.